Rudellion. They know how to stall out a game and pick their fights depending on the situation. With that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number one between Alter Ego and Rebellion Zion. We'll see exactly how they are going to be able to implement their respective drafts in this first game. And I was thinking that it's going to be a clue in the XP lane, but that is not the way that Rebellion Zion is playing it out. And right now, you do see that the glue is... Hang on, give me, wait a minute. The glue is just on the top side trying to make plays here. That was confusing me for a bit, honestly. Yeah, it seems like he is trying to play to that gold side. Ryzo oh already God. having a really God. hard time as well, right? And I'm wondering, that is the Jujutsu Kaisen skin! Of course, it's Nobara Kogisaki in the flesh. MLBBX Jujutsu Kaisen skins are now available in the game. Join the MLBBX Jujutsu Kaisen gacha event from the 18th of February all the way to the 20th of March. So you still have a lot of time to enjoy the 50% off on your daily first draw one time, okay? A collab item or even a permanent collab skin is guaranteed in the first 10 draws. My god. What a skin. The economic way. The economic way. Yeah, don't, don't go full like Mirko and Arashi. You guys can go the economic way and do it every day because of that 50% discount. But back into the game here, it does seem like Rebellion Zion already having a slight lead here. Yes, 200 uh, yeah. to 400, 500. I wonder why that is. They have been more aggressive and they got a bit of powered gold as well, right? So that's probably it. It's just a small, minute amount right now. I think it's going to be pretty even all the way until the first turtle. But as I mentioned, the early game for Alter Ego is very, very dangerous. Although for now, Udil has not been able to actually pull off a significant gank. Even though Vijanargo has been in the gold lane, they haven't been able to actually push out that mid lane uh, decisively enough to actually get extra as high as here. This precious Rizal, but the turtle is going to be contested by Rebellion for now. They make the first move. Again, on to the first turtle, it's Vincent Burke with the Martis. Whoa, find over the Raven Spider, trying to go for the zone. Sunny Boy finishing it off with the Retribution. Solid one, is that Pi? Who flickers forward with the stun, gets the damage done. The Divine Judgment now brings Swaylo back into the fray. And it's Sally Boy who picks up the kill. Alter Ego looking like their past selves here. Sally Boy goes in for the invade. Legion Arco is on to him with a split split. Might just be going for it, but will not. Go for the full engages for now. It's still Alter Ego with just an 800 gold lead. And with that in mind, it was really interesting, right? Both of the mid laners. Wait a minute here. Talking about the mid laner. Uh oh, hi. Ooh. These fires surviving for a bit, That's but like we mentioned, the mid lane. Like, how active you are in the mid lane is going to be playing so much for that gold lane. The, the matchup is a losing one, but with the mid lane constantly roaming, it can always be a winning one. It's never a 1v1. Town prediction, it's definitely not a 1v1 here. 2v1, rather. 2v1. Everyone. <laughs> a bit everyone. of deja vu here, because me and the Golden Ranger on the Indonesian desk, we have... Alter Ego, only two of us, but now Vijanarko makes that play at the top side. It's never a 1v1 in the gold lane. Rizal gonna never. fall here. It's just, man, as a gold laner, you gotta get used to this, right? Heiz picks up the corrosive side, and Alter Ego, again, with the 1000 gold lead, sure, they are leading in the early stage of the game, but it's very easily reversible still. Uh, 1k, one team fight, just a, a, one pick can turn it around. Could be right now, actually. Look at the way that Alter Ego are positioning themselves. Vincent might be caught. Good yes. opening here. Because there is a bit of poke, but Rossi doesn't decide to go for the Divine Judgment, knowing that maybe they do not have enough damage. Early on, this crowd control is amazing, but of course, with the crowd control immunity, Vincent has a lot more leeway to play around. He so far hasn't been able to try and be aggressive and shut down Sally Boy. We talked about him being on a tank utility jungler, not exactly part of his personality. So far, we haven't seen how well he can perform or how bad he can perform on the flip side. But with this turtle coming up, we'll see if he can secure the second turtle, because it seems that like Rebellion Zion, they are making moves to try and deny that from Alter Ego. Vincent is one level below. They're still gonna go for the contest right here. Vincent jumps in with the anti-CC. Divine Judgment finds it, and that's gonna be Vincent taken down. Also, Sally Boy finding the retribution aside, jumps in with a wild charge, getting the stun down, but Sally Boy is gonna be able to zone the backline away. Highs not dealing enough damage just for now as he pops in the puppet, dealing some damage to Sally Boy, but it's only just the utility jungler. Alter Ego still with that 1,000 gold lead, holding on to it. Top side, Ryzel gonna go for some damage here. Highs ends up winning the trade. 
and Rizal is forced to back away with Region Arco and Swaylo rotating up top. It's Heiz who can actually shove the wave to deny some minions. 1,000 gold lead though for Alter Ego Esports and you can see Rizal already having a really difficult time. He is actually behind in bold as well compared to the Melissa. But if you look in the jungle though, Sally Boy is ahead of Vincent, so there's always that to play around with. And in the mid lane, similar story as Udil has been able to clear and be participant in a lot more skirmishes in the early game. That's contributing to the 1k gold difference. Still a small amount though, so Alter Ego, if they really want to start snowballing, they need to try and get something extra, try and take control of the game. And with Pi picking up that Bloodlust Axe, that just might be the, the leverage that they need to try and start imposing their will onto Rebellion Zion. They also need to help out the Yeev a little bit, right? Swaylo is quite behind compared to the Farsa. I know that the Yeev already has some really good basic damage and basic slow, but still needs those items, still needs that Ice Queen wand and some more other items to be able to have an impact, especially with the real world manipulation already being outranged by the Feather Airstrike of the Farsa. Oh, the go away doesn't get you out of range of the Divine Judgment. And it's Rossi who finds an amazing pickoff up top with the activeness of Udil, the Kage. Again, this is what we mentioned. Losing matchups don't really matter if you're able to rotate up there. That mid-presence is just so important, and with that play, with that sequence of events, Alter Ego extended gold lead to 1.5, and they're still not done yet, looking for more options, all more opportunities, and once they start snowballing, if Rion Zeran isn't careful, even with Janarko on this blue, will be pressured quite a bit. He's already being more susceptible to damage, but he makes moves to the gold lane, trying to make sure they have presence in the lane before going for the neutral objective. Oh, Miss Flicker there. Rizal is able to step out. Udil going to be taken down, though, in that mid lane. It's a kill onto the mid laner, traded for the turtle. Alter Ego with full control on the neutral objective. And Sally Boy, despite what we said, he's popping off on the utility, man. It's safer. It's a safer pick, and you can't go too wrong on it, but... With that in mind here, Wijanarka already trying to pressure Selly Boy as they are trying to get a little bit more on the top side, right? They are trying to get that turret away from Rizel, but unfortunately is not going to be able to happen Blue just yet. Has been I think Zion will be resorting to a split push kind of strategy. They do have a Grok with the high and dry, so that is something they can explore. Although I do feel like right now, their focus seems to be to shut down Udil, right? If Udil is doing way too ahead, uh, way too good, and he's way too ahead in gold, that effectively shuts down Heiz as a damage dealer as well. So it's a wise move. We'll see if it's enough though, because as of right now, it's still a 1.5k gold lead, but Rossi makes a play again. Again with the flicker, Heiz cannot react to the play fast enough. As Vigenarko goes on to Udil, gets him immobilized, brings him back to the team. It might just be a solo kill. Selly Boy jumps into the back line. Swaylo's gonna be caught very low, but he's still able to type back. Udil solo killed by the Roamer in that top side. Meanwhile, you can already see Rossi trying to put the damage back in. The conceal has been popped in. Vigenarko still looking for a pick, but will be forced to back away now. Pops in a split split, so can a whole lot of damage, but Selly Boy isn't able to just finish him off for now. Saif has rotated towards that top side, but he's a level behind a pie who can definitely put in more killing pressure towards Rebellion Zion. 1,700 gold leads still for Alter Ego Esports. And the problem is, I feel like there was a lot of setup coming in from Cars before they swapped it out for Saif, and the effect doesn't seem to be the same. Rebellion Zion, they can't control the side lanes, and it looks difficult for them to play around and have that map pressure that they initially had. Right now, Rebellion Zion are relying on Vijan Arco just being very oppressive, 3 and 0, and being able to actually use solo kill the gold in essentially. So it's a appropriate plan, it makes sense, but at the same time, they don't have the same kind of team fight pressure without Vijan Arco acting as the main initiating tool because he's diving all the way towards that back line. So they can't really have any chance to catch the members of Alter Ego. And aside, uh, in turn, that allows. Uh, Rossi to just seem a lot better at going for these pickups. Look at Pi once again with the stun onto the back line with the Bravest Fighter as well, forcing Swaylo to back off with the goal away he's placed down. Heiz is looking for the kill, but Pi is still alive for so long by so much time as Vincent is going to be stunned up against the wall. Rizal just spacing enough to get out of the wild charge. Alter Ego are taking full control of this game with a 3,000 gold lead now. Pi gets taken down as he's kind of like the distraction for Alter Ego Esports. We saw that in the team where he was distracting in the front side and the way that Alter Ego Esports is playing, you can see Rossi just full on babysit, full on 
protect Rizal mode, and he doesn't go in for that initiation. The person to do that is hard. Opai already has the Hunter Strike on top of the Bloodlust Axe, so you saw that in that fight, he was able to actually get a kill 1v3, essentially. And now with the Blade Armor as well, that means that he is a problem for Hyze to try and shred down as well. If you look at the composition from Rebellion Zion, Hyze is one of the only destroyed. sources of actual DPS as of right now, so it's gonna be a tough situation for Rebellion to try and curb Pi as that strong, dominant backline diver that can just ruin their whole backline presence and also get followed up by Udil, who already has a Divine Glaive. It's looking tough. Right now, all three games for 6,000 gold lead. It is still an unenhanced Lord, so it should be oh, a bit of damage, oh, 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 oh. but wait! Look at this, Sully Boy even jumping towards that backline, but Heinz is still going to be able to dish out the damage right now. He is in the backline. Free hitting for Sully Boy! Finds the Appraiser's Wrath! Max Rage! Rossi is able to bring Twaylo back, but it's only just for the flicker. My goodness! Heinz, with a miscalculation in his positioning there, ends up dying to a very, very short-range hero. Rebellion Zion still trying to defend in the mid lane with the help of the Zeev. High ground clear is on their side. They will be able to do this for now, but in that top side, you can already see Ryzo putting the damage down. The that is right taking so much of Swaylo's HP away. Even Vincent is going to be forced back as a frontliner. And it's one of the base turrets cracked open. 7,500 gold lead. A lot of trades on the board for Alter Ego Esports. And it poses another question whether or not Heiz is actually comfortable on the Melissa. Uh -huh. Looking at the player's gold here by Ubias, you can see how far behind Heiz is. 6,000 compared to Ryzel at 8,700. Over the Farsa and the Kaja constantly ganking your lane, it's easier said than done to try and stay alive and stay farmed up. 7k golded for Alter Ego, and that just means that at any part of the game right now, they're always behind in clear, in burst damage, and Rebellion Zion actually has a lot of utility, a lot of catch, a lot of chase potential, but considering how behind they are, Alter Ego doesn't really mind because they can just match Rebellion Zion and win the fight through sheer gold difference. So unless Alter Ego makes a mistake, Rebellion Zion need to be very careful in how they pick these fights because if they wait too long, they get poked down by the Feather Airstrike, but if they get engaged too early, they're also not exactly at a place to dictate the kind of movement so it's very situational, and all two ego are the ones who has all the cards as of right now, at least. Yeah, you can even see them like just freezing those lanes, right? Trying to look for a pick off on the board, but Ujinarko here goes in for a concealed play. Down below, it's Rizal who's going to be caught in the RWM. He jumps forward here, but the damage comes in. Rizal, oh my goodness gracious, is still able to find a trade. 1v4! Heiz picks up the shutdown, definitely not good for Alter Ego, but it's a trade they will definitely take as they are going to be able to secure the Lord. They're taking their time though, trying to time it just right. But I wonder... Oh yeah, it was a risky move to go for it. I think they were trying to get it above the 10th second of the 13th minute, just to get it... Just to give Ryzel a bit more time to set up with the team. I think the idea was to send Rasi along with Rizal in the bottom side, and whoever is sent to try and deal with the split push gets picked off, right? Gets Divine Judgmented, and then gets stunned on the wall, and Rizal will take him out. But unfortunately for them, Rebellion Zion, by, fear, by sheer coincidence, or maybe they read through that idea, they go and get the kill onto Rizal. But as you mentioned, Mirko, able to get a kill in that situation, that is insane. He is one more item away from a full item build with the Wind of Nature already secure. So even later on, when, it, when the going gets tough, when it's a dirty team fight where everyone just hitting each other, he will have an advantage and more sustainability as Udil is still doing more and more damage. But there goes the wall charge. A good flicker wall charge combo onto Udil, forcing the flicker out. But now it's the base wide open. The base turret's falling left and right. Vincent trying to act as the front line as Pi has popped in. A brave spider. Zion, once again, just holding on to the mini waves coming in, and that's the Divine Judgment onto Ouija Narco. He's been taken down, the base is wide oh. open. Vincent is looking for the kill, finds it onto Udil. Alter Ego putting their focus on the wrong target, trying to save Selly Boy and Udil, who's already dead. Meanwhile, the base right here can be defended just for a bit, but Ryzo steps back to pick it up. It's Alter Ego who secure game number one. Leading the series, the best of three against Rebellion Zion right now, and I gotta say, that was a very dominant showing by Alter Ego Esports. A lot oh. has changed, right, since the last time we saw both of these teams play. Uh, we saw kids being swapped out. We saw a difference in the coaching staff. We also see that Kars was replaced by Saeb. Not really sure which one it is, but 
Alter Ego Esports, they're capitalizing over the swap. 